Firstly, thank you to everyone who's joining us uh, today. We appreciate it very much. Thank you to the AFAU, the Australian Friends of Oral University, for putting together the webinar and every, everything that they're doing to promote and grow our university in Australia, both in uh, Melbourne and Sydney. We appreciate all your efforts. Um, firstly, thank you to uh, Dr. Paul Joffe, who's going to be our moderator today. Um, we appreciate you taking the time out and being part of this webinar. Um, Paul comes with a rich knowledge in the area. He completed his training in RACP, pediatric specialist uh, training in Melbourne at the Royal Children's Hospital, as well as various organizations overseas. He comes with a deep, deep understanding of the issues, um, having uh, expertise in neurodevelopmental and behavioral disorders, including uh, such areas as ADHD, mood disorders, developmental de delay, autism, and various other learning difficulties. And we appreciate you bringing that knowledge to the conversation. Um, Sharon Peleg is the head of the clinics in uh, our university, which gives services to the various services to the entire area, both uh, all the residents of the area of Ariel, and she'll go into a bit a bit more later on. Sharon um, was the uh, vice president um, of the uh, Therapy Speech and Language Disorder Therapy. Uh, sorry, um, I got mixed up here. I apologize. She's the vice president of. Um, uh, I just lost my notes and I, um, I apologize um, of, of the um, Israeli speech language and hearing association. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, but that, <laughs> uh, she, she set up all the services um, that we're doing the university, giving treatment to both uh, pediatric as well as um, elderly treatment. And we have specialized in various treatments for uh, children with autistic uh, spectrum disorder. Um, so she comes with a, a knowledge that's quite unique and has helped develop many um, projects in our university that are unique to both Israel and uh, around the world. Um, so thank you very much. And I will hand over to Paul um, to begin the fireside chat. Yes, thanks so much, Adrian. And um, it's a pleasure, obviously, to be working with uh, the Australian Friends of Ariel University in a wonderful organization, a groundbreaking organization and you know, this this topic of autism spectrum disorder is is something close to my heart also professionally um, this is forming the basis of much of my uh, both uh, research and work and I'm dealing with autism spectrum disorders and I'm sure we all know people with autism spectrum disorders um, many aspects of traditional testing and services for children and adults alike are limited due to the inherent communication uh, breakdowns that uh, people who are neurodiverse in this way experience. And um, I'd like to, I, I guess, start by asking Sharon, you know, who, who I guess this, this sentence is and what they represent, how it's come about and what kind of services in general do, does Ariel University Clinic provide? Okay, so first of all, I must say that English is not my first language and uh, I hope I won't uh, stutter too much and I'll be fluent. Uh, so excuse me for using my notes and um, I'll start. The Ariel University Clinics offer a full range of therapy center on campus. Uh, we provide an essential uh, uh, resource not only to people in the city of Ariel, but also in the neighborhood, and, uh, and, but also um, far uh, away around Israel. Uh, the clinic uh, mission is to provide a comprehensive uh, therapy solution for people uh, with wide, wide uh, range of challenges and uh, to provide in-house solution for academic uh, purposes like practicum and research. We have here 3, 000, uh, 300 students a year that make the, uh, the practicum in-house. Uh, there are three, three divisions in the clinic. One is the, the first one is the child development unit. Uh, we provide developmental treatments for children from birth to 21. And uh, 
this is the biggest uh, uh, child development center in Israel. In 2022, uh, we provided uh, 14,000 treatment for the year, the whole year. It's used for Israel. Um, the second division is a neurological center. Uh, we provide neurological uh, testing for children and adults. Uh, this, the last uh, division is um, something I think is unique to Israel. In Israel, uh, um, children with autism, are, uh, uh, they have special kindergartens um, uh, that provide 14 hours treatment a week for each child. And uh, we provide the developmental treatment for those children uh, within the framework of the kindergarten around the, the country. We have 17 kindergartens that we provide the service here. We hope it's, it makes it that uh, we are helping uh, 150 children age uh, three to seven um, who are all with ASD. So we provide the uh, 1,000, uh, 100,000 hours treatment per year for those children, because it's very big uh, treatment that they receive. Impressive. Okay. And, you know, I'm just, just asking a little bit about this. Do you, do you determine I guess, what level of autism these children have, or what's the process of, I guess, working out who can be enrolled in this? Whoever has ASD can enroll into those kindergartens and they are heterogenics because um, the thought is, uh, the, think, the thing that you think beyond is what the parent will think. If you say this is a kindergarten for high function, this is a kindergarten for, for low function. No, my kid is not low function. I want them to be, so they don't do it in Israel. They usually do in heterogenic uh, kindergartens according to the age of the child. Right. And so this, this to me sounds excellent because it's all about early intervention. Yeah. What I just want to ask you, and maybe you can help the listeners and who are here for this meeting, is why it's so necessary to test, in fact, the hearing for children who might have restricted communication uh, or, or children undergoing even the diagnostic process of autism. Okay, so during the diagnostic process, it's very important to exclude hearing loss because um, uh, sometimes the child is not responsive and uh, we don't know why. It might be because he can't hear you and it might be because it's not responsive because due to the autism. So um, you first of all must uh, exclude the, the opportunity that uh, the, uh, the opportunity I think is uh, for him. And, but also when a child is all, already diagnosed as ASD, uh, that he has ASD, uh, sometimes they suffer from hearing loss because of uh, fluids in his, their ears or whatever, and there, it reduces their opportunity to respond. So it's important to know what's going on in their ear and uh, if you can help them uh, medically, okay, or sometimes uh, surgeon, surgically. Um, that's the reason. It's very important. I hope it's I mean, for me, it's, it's a fascinating thought because, you know, part of the diagnostic process, in fact, probably the most famous from, from a popular culture point of view, diagnostic process for, for children who are experiencing an autism spectrum disorder is poor joint communication or eye contact or response to communication. And we are only presuming that the child can hear when we try to communicate with them. So it's so important that we can access, that we can successfully uh, treat, I mean, uh, test the hearing in children and, and make it accessible to them and their families. Can you tell us a little bit about the challenges that you uh, feel in, in your position um, that might be coming about when conducting audiological testing on children with autism? 
So it's not an easy task uh, because they do not cooperate all the time. So this is the main issue that it's there, there are lack of cooperation. Sometimes it's because uh, they are all in their own world. Sometimes it's because they have uh, anxiety uh, problems as well. So um, the other option, if the child do, do not cooperate, is to go to a an hospital and um, uh, do a an general anesthetic uh, or a, um, not general, how you say, the local anesthesia. It's like sedax, sedax uh, yeah. station. And, uh, but this gives us uh, only one uh, um, uh, hertz how this, um, frequency. It's not the whole range. You can't know exactly what's going on in his ears and why, and it's not enough. So it, the, the solution, even if a, a parent would like to give anesthesia to, for this child is not good enough uh, for us. And um, when you know the child and you fit, uh, you made an adjustment and tailor fit for the uh, testing, you can find out what what is the um, hearing if he has hearing loss? Where uh, where is it located and so on? So it's very important to overcome the the difficulties of of uh, the cooperation issue, mm. and you can do it. And so, if, I guess the next question would be. Uh, how can we and what kind of breakthroughs has, has your team made in making the testing of uh, audiology more accessible and adaptable to children on the spectrum? So first of all, we, we are asking ourselves and we're asking the parents before they're coming, what is the uh, child abilities and difficulties? We would like to know if he has special interest. As you know, many of the kids with autism has special uh, uh, interests. So if it's like penguins or uh, Tommy uh, the train or what, whatever it is, okay, it's Sammy. And uh, um, we would like to know his reactions to tr strangers. Maybe we can send a picture of us before and it will be easier. Um, uh, sensory sensitivity, because we would like to put hear earphones on his ears. So if it's, he has special sensory sensitivities, we can do something about that. Uh, we would like to know if he speaks, his ability to comprehend, to understand the uh, uh, instructions. Um, Another thing is um, maybe prior to arriving in the clinic, we could reduce his anxiety by sending him a, a social story. I, know, I don't know if everybody knows what it is. It's a therapeutic uh, tool that we use uh, to prepare children on the spectrum uh, for negative or new uh, unfamiliar situation. It's like a story with the uh, um, uh, uh, pictures. Uh, we can send a video showing the, the room that is going to be inside. And the room of the audiological testing is, is small and there is an echo there. It's, it's kind of echo. It's, it's like somebody, some people feel very stressed in a small room. So maybe if you see a video before, it will help him. Uh, we can uh, uh, get head, head um, a set of headphones that he can put around on his ears, that he can feel them and know in advance how it feels. We can send the pictures that he's going to have to see, then the, it won't be a, um, uh, something that he didn't see until then. So first, as I said, it's knowing about his difficulties and the interests. The second thing is to reduce this anxiety. The third thing uh, is to adapt uh, the testing itself, uh, themselves by uh, using the things we learned. We can uh, uh, use the knowledge we know how he reacts to strangers. 
we can use the knowledge we have about the hill phones, how would we put, if we would put them or not. Uh, we could know if he likes a special interest, we can make everything on a tablet, uh, preparing it from advance and that and not the pictures that you, we are usually using or the or the stuff we are usually and if he likes special sounds we can make those as a, a reinforcement sounds that he likes or something that we make him want to be in the room and do something again and again and the fourth thing is um a, giving the, the pace he needs because in usually in a ideological testing everything is very quick in 20 minutes the child is gone he finished everything but here maybe we can, should bring we should um, give a lot of reinforcement will take time so we need to have this time we should let him fill the room uh, maybe just move around inside the room for five minutes and you will feel less excited, uh, excited and, and you'll be able to sit and uh, have the audiological testing uh, running. Um, that's it, I think. Those are the things we thought about. Maybe the are um, more. Yeah, one of the things that you said that strikes me as most fascinating is that there is a sense that when you have a dedicated assessment process for audiological testing for children who are diverse and on the spectrum, they are given time and patience. And one of the things that I find is an obstruction to any type of procedure or assessment um, in all the allied health realms, uh, especially in Australia and Melbourne, is the pace in which they are expected to A, get used to to the new environment and transition to that and B, communicate their needs. And a lot of patients that I see in children on the spectrum, the reason why they're non-adherent is because the assessors aren't quite reading their language. So presumably your centre is offering a lot of resources into that. Um, can I ask how young or old a patient has to be to participate in an audiological test? Seven months in Israel, we started to uh, use uh, behavioral audiological testing and uh, uh, the age, is whatever, it's not important how, how old, is. if he's an adult, we don't, we couldn't care less because he might be low function uh, autistic. And the thing here in the clinic, since we have this, this uh, developmental uh, clinic center that our speech pathologist, I don't know how it is in Australia, in Israel, speech pathologists are uh, also audiological. Audiologic, uh, it, we have the same, yeah. degree, uh, we learn it together, but uh, each uh, profession, uh, each therapy goes to some direction. So uh, we have five out, out of 50, something like that, that are, that are uh, doing the audiological testing and also uh, working with audiological, uh, with a speech, as a speech pathologist, which kills with ASD. So those are very special persons. It's not all over the, I don't work as an audiological for 35 years already. So I don't know how to do a test already, but uh, there are a few of those and they are uh, collaborating together. And because in Israel until age five, you need two uh, testers. Uh, not only one, one inside the room, and one is uh, doing the, the, the specific things with the audiometer outside, and um, the cooperation between them, that the one who knows more about autistic children with, autist, uh, with autism, he, she's inside, and she's making it easier to the child inside. And it's very helpful. And we obviously with kids with autism, we bring uh, even after age five that the, the government tells us to bring two testers. We uh, need two uh, test 
doctors above age five. I have, I have some more questions only because it's fascinating. Uh, it's interesting that it sounds like such a well-resourced um, center, yet, yet the university itself is, is rather new. Um, who was this the brainchild of and how long has it been operating? We are operating for, uh, um, I know, 13, uh, well, 13 years. 13 years. Okay, 13 years. But uh, I'm here for nine years. Before I came, it was very small uh, clinic. There were only 11 uh, uh, therapists. Now we have 150 therapists. Uh, so it's very big now and we are trying to make a lot of projects that help the community uh, the community here uh, let's say in Ariel there are a lot of Russian immigrants and uh, so we make special projects in the kindergarten in, this, in the city for bilingual children um, we try to help the surroundings also and make a lot of things that are new. Uh, the only thing I didn't tell you about the audiological test, uh, testing uh, that since we give the, pay, the child his own paste, it takes an hour, sometimes, sometimes only uh, 45 minutes, but it's a uh, triple free of the usual time because usually it takes 20 minutes to test the child and uh, a person with autism it takes 45 minutes to 60 minutes and we need this time and also they're preparing things because we send them the storytelling uh, the social story we uh, speak with the parents uh, sometimes we speak to the kindergarten uh, speech pathologist that knows the kid um, since we have some of the kindergarten that we provide this, uh, the 14 hour a week for the children. So sometimes the speech pathologists from the kindergartens, no matter where it is, they come here with the kid, with the child, because he knows her. So it's better that he will do the, the audiological testing with her and not with somebody from inside the clinic She's our uh, employee, so it's easy to do so. And um, we combine all the resources that we have in order to, to have a clear uh, observation of the hearing status of the child. It's very important. I had, uh, maybe I'll tell a story. Four years ago, there was a, a child in one of the kindergartens that we uh, are associated with. And uh, he was diagnosed as, as autism, but when we finally did his uh, te audiological testing, uh, they found out that he's uh, deaf, and uh, he needs hearing aids. Who knows? Maybe if he had hearing aids, we would have asked other questions about his uh, ASD status. And, That's uh, a fascinating story. Yeah, I mean, for me, for me, very personally, sad. Sad, I think. Yeah, um, we have a, a, a study here in Australia with the University of Melbourne, just largely based on school-aged children using FM receivers to help their hearing. But one of the obstructions has always been an adequate assessment of children on the spectrum. So I think this is a fascinating topic, and you're doing amazing things because even that one child, for instance, who may have been misdiagnosed or didn't have a full picture of their development. Um, can I also ask you out of my own uh, interest before we kind of open up to anybody, uh, what is your, I guess, five to 10 year plan with the clinics in general? Wow. <laughs> so in, half, in uh, six months, we're planning to open a, an adult and teenager division um which will be a very unsuccessful uh, uh, financially at the beginning of uh, well we know that it won't be uh, good at all 
the budget will be very low, uh, but um, because uh, we know that in all these surrounding areas, there is no clinic like that. And people who had CVA or even just a car accident or here in this area, you can be shot or whatever. Uh, they have nowhere to be re re rehabilitated. rehabilitated. And they need to travel for two hours. Uh, and if it's three times, a, a, three times a week, they don't go. And they are not uh, rehabilitated, and it's very uh, sad. So as a university, we decided that we'll take it on us. I hope um, it will succeed and, um, and uh, it will help people around. Um, this is the first thing I can tell you. Uh, the other things are little steps, baby steps of projects that we are planning. Uh, the the project of uh, uh, the audiological testing for uh, children, I think if uh, we'll have the fun funding for that, because uh, the government doesn't fund uh, this kind of uh, time that we need, I think all the children, uh, there will be a lot of children that will want to come to the center because it is a question that many ask. We have people who are coming from Hedera. It's like four hour drive, I think. And Ashkelon, it's very far from here, but people know that it's, they rather have that, that rather than not knowing what's the uh, hearing status of the child. And they come and they come inside my room after and say, wow, it's like, we were for five times with audiological testing and we never cooperated. And this is the first time we get an audiogram. So I hope this will be something new that we are doing. Um, I have a few dreams, but uh, <laughs> I don't know if I'll succeed with making them. Um, I would like to make, uh, to be a center of learning about ASD for uh, people who treat them, that it will be academic, more academic and more knowledge of academic and not uh, like just, there are a lot of places that people do trials, you know, they test whether it works and we would like to make things more, um, uh, how do you say, um, a research, uh, um, well, there is a, Phrase um, in a moment uh, that you do things by the knowledge of research um, and not just by intuition. Yeah. So, and uh, that's it, I think. So, um, I'm I'm sorry that I'm not letting anyone ask a question, but I I just I just have another important question. You know, you you. In reference to the fact that you want to open up another clinic um, uh, that would be accessible to young adults and adults uh, who have experienced all types of trauma and financially you'll I guess deal with those woes later but what are you relying on and where do you guys get your funding from? Um, in Israel, the, the government funds, funds uh, treatments in very low budget, like uh, if the profession, the, the therapist cost me uh, 130 shekels an hour, and they found something like 60 or <laughs> things like that. So it helps, but it's not enough. Uh, they, it's... Um, since the mission of the university is to help the population around us. So we feel that it's, it's okay to use the fundings that, uh, that, are getting, that we are getting from other uh, places in the university. And also in my clinic myself, we have uh, some of the divisions, we get enough money to bring it to this division. So, we hope that also uh, we'll, there will be a lot of research in this division because a lot of researchers are 
uh, interested in, in those kinds of uh, population that we'll have. And uh, every research that is uh, uh, published, uh, the, I don't know how it's called, the uh, VATAT, it's like, uh, Adrian, maybe you can say, how do you call it in English? But, uh, within the Council of Higher Learning, there's a budget department and they uh, give budgeting according to certain criteria that universities uh, match. Um, so I'd say the budgeting department of the Council of Higher Learning. So they give a budget if you uh, pu publish a research uh, in a very un a known uh, international uh, paper. Uh, so I hope this will bring budget also. It will take like five years to bring budget from those kinds of researches, I think. But uh, we'll start small and uh, with a lot of... Uh, uh, goodwill here. It's it's you know um, many people said that this building was built from uh, hard bricks and not from real bricks. In Israel, it's the same word brick and and hard. So we hope uh, it's right, and from that we uh, we we will succeed. Kol kavod and b'hatzlacha. I guess Adrian. Um, that concludes my particular selfish questions, but is there anything else you'd like to add? And, and also, what can we all do to help? Uh, so firstly, thank you very much. I think maybe I'll hand over to Lawrence, who's uh, on the board of the Sydney Friends of our University, um, to deal with the next stage. Uh, well, thank you. Um... I just want to just thank uh, Sharon and Dr. Paul again for that that really intriguing conversation. I, you know, I um the the university's got a remarkable ability to find segments of the population that that have these critical unmet needs, um, and then this groundbreaking medical solutions to to address them. So you know, like this behavioral uh, audiological testing is groundbreaking stuff. Um, certainly, um, you know, I've, I've, I was privileged enough to kind of spend some time at the Institute for Personalized and Translational Medicine, who's doing a lot of work in unmet needs in women's health. Um, you know, the, these, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm absolutely blown away by the, the skilled and committed team that I see in, in the university or, you know, a source of inspiration. It's, I think the, the work that you do is incredible. And, and, and I think, you know, Sharon, you mentioned that you 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 have a goal to to kind of to help the community around the university, but I think it's it's way beyond that. I think the work that you're doing, and uh, please God, with with that full in in the fullness of time, with the research around that, that the, you can then become a center of learning for ASD. It certainly have a, a impact around the world. So 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 the next steps for us, I think, first of all, if if anybody that isn't following uh, friends of uh, Ariel University in Australia. Australian friends of our Australian university. If you can, if you can follow, please follow us because there's there's lots of stuff that we're doing together with the university. So, um, Ilana, if you can just put the the link in the chat, that'll be very helpful. Um, and then also, you know, uh, funding. I think it's something like two hundred dollars per test. Um, you know, we, the the more tests that we do, the more lives that 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 can be changed. So, you know, you heard the story of one 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 life that was changed completely through a test so you know imagine if we could do 100 extra tests 200 extra tests um you know the 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 the, the money that that's raised all will go um to finding additional um uh, patients that need that so yeah from us just thanking you again for all the amazing work that you're doing we will we we'll certainly will continue to support and uh, and uh, hopefully be able to support ongoing Thank you so much. Thank you to, to everyone, um, to, to Sharon and to Paul. It was, it was I, I can say that the, the talk was inspiring. Um, mm -hmm. Sharon, Paul, thank you for, uh, for being part of it and, and for your interest. Sharon, for what you're doing. To everybody who joined us on the, on the, the, the Zoom link, everybody who's on Facebook and following the conversation live. We appreciate you taking the time. Um, Australia has always been a great friend of Israel. And when we've been for the university has embraced us um, every time we come and visit. 
the work being done by Lawrence and, and Harriet and other people on the Friends of has been uh, incredible and uh, really um, a strong dedication that moves us all. So thank you to everybody. And we look forward to welcoming everybody who's on the, the Zoom today to the University of in Israel next. Come and visit. We'd love to meet you. And anybody who can, um, you know, maybe come and see Sharon's clinic, see how they can work with us and help us, we'd be happy to take you around. Thank you all very much. Thank you. That's a, it's a very kind invitation. And I just want to say, if you have the opportunity, take the opportunity. It's the most fascinating day you will spend in Israel by far. So it is, you know, it's a bit of a hassle to get out there, Teriel. The guys will help you get there. It is the most fascinating day that you will spend. So, so take that opportunity. Take take Adrian up on that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye bye, everybody. <laughs>